वेलकम लर्नर्स टू एन आई ओ एस स्टूडियो आई डॉक्टर गार्गी कौर मजुमदार फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी शहीद भगत सिंह कॉलेज दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी वुड लाइक टू प्रेजेंट और टेक यू थ्रू द बायोस्फेयर कॉन्सेप्ट द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस सेशन इज टू एनालाइज द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ बायोस्फेयर एंड इन्फर इट्स लिमिट्स टू स्टडी द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ बायोस्फेयर एंड इट्स इंटर रिलेशनशिप विद लिथोस्फेयर एटमोसफेयर एंड हाइड्रोस्फेयर to discuss the key concepts like ecology ecosystem and types of ecosystems to appreciate the importance of balance interdependence and energy flow in different ecosystems let's begin now have a look at the biosphere now what is a biosphere in simple term biosphere refers to the narrow zone of the earth in which all life forms exist in this zone all the three essential things which are required for sustenance of life are found in a right mixture they are land air and water this zone extends vertically into the atmosphere to about 10 km downward into the ocean to depth of about 10.4 km and into about 27000 feet of the earth's surface where maximum living organisms have been found this is simple representation of the spheres of the earth there are some life forms which are found in extreme conditions two example of these types are algae and thermophilic algae which is supposed to be one of the earliest forms of life can exist even in the most hostile environment such as frozen antarctica on the other extreme side thermophilic which are the heat loving bacteria usually inhabit de deep sea volcanic vents having a temperature of more than 300 degree centigrade in fact these bacteria cannot survive in a temperature below boiling point now let's learn about the evolution of biosphere The situation was not like this when the life form began. About 700 million years ago, it is believed to have been only a narrow, discontinuous land encompassing only shallow parts of the ocean. It was only after a few million years the expanse of the biosphere gets extended beyond the upper troposphere. This shows that biosphere has been evolving over the time. Horizontally, biosphere covers the entire globe. do the life may not be possible in some of the hottest and coldest parts however most living things are confined to a narrow land which permits the capture of solar energy through the process of photosynthesis which is essential for any organic life this narrow region extends from about 180 to 200 feet below sea level to the highest value of snow line in tropical and subtropical mountain ranges say uh, 6550 meter above sea levels when it extend beyond this line life form becomes very limited now let's have a look at the components of biosphere biosphere has three basic components these are abiotic which is the physical and inner inorganic components biotic which is the organic component and third the energy component now let's discuss the abiotic component in detail These components broadly consist of all non-living elements which are essential for the survival of living organisms. These are land, atmosphere and water or hydrosphere. Mineral, nutrient, certain gases and water are the three basic requirements of organic life. Soils and sediments constitute the chief reservoir of mineral nutrients. Atmosphere constitute the chief reservoir of gases essential for organic life. ocean constitutes the chief reservoir of liquid water now have a look at the abiotic biotic and energy components now what are the biotic components B biotic components are like plants animals and human beings including microorganism constitute the three biotic components of environment plants are most important among biotic components they are the only primary producers as they produce their own food through the process of photosynthesis and hence are called autotrophs plants also help in cycling and recycling of organic matters and nutrients thus plants are the major source of food as well as energy for all organisms now have a look at this autotroph picture the plants now animals while plants are the primary producers the animals are the main consumers therefore animals are heterotrophs there are three main functions of animals to use organic matter made available by plant as food 
to transform the food into energy and to utilize the energy for growth and development. These are some of the pictures of herbivores and carnivores animals. Now what are microorganisms? These consist of a variety of microbacteria, fungi, etc. The numbers are unlimited and are popularly known as decomposers. As the name suggests, these organisms decompose the dead plants and animals and other organic matters. Through decomposition, they obtain their food and also separate organic matters from dead organisms and put them to reuse by producers. This is the picture of decomposers, that is the microorganisms. Now let's have a look at the energy component. This is the third and vital component of the biosphere without which life could not have been possible on this planet. It is essential for generation and reproduction of all biological life on this planet. All organisms in the biosphere are like machines which use energy to work and also to convert from one form of energy into another. Sun is the major source of energy. Now let's do a quick recap of what have we have learned till now. Biosphere refers to the narrow part of the earth in which all life form exists. Life is found in this region due to availability of right mixture of land, air and water. And there are three major components of biosphere which are abiotic, biotic and energy component. And sun is the major source of energy without which existence of biosphere is not possible. Now let's discuss the terms ecology and ecosystem. Now ecology is the study of interaction between the organisms and their environment. The two components of nature, organism and environment are not only related, but both these components function in an orderly manner as a definite system. The term ecosystem is used to describe such a system. The word ecosystem is a short form of ecological system it was first used by A.G. Tansley in 1935. An ecosystem can be defined as a system of regularly interacting and interdependent components forming a unified whole. In other words, any segment of the landscape that includes biotic and abiotic components is known as ecosystem if all its compon components are integrated with each other. For example, a lake or a pond is an ecosystem when it is considered in its totality and not just as a water body. The concept of ecosystem revolves around two aspects. First, it studies interaction among the various components and subcomponents, and second, flow of energy among various components of ecosystem, which is essential determinants of how a biological community functions. This is a diagrammatic representation of flow of energy in an ecosystem. Now let's study the functional aspect of ecosystem. These are energy flow, food chain, biogeochemical cycle, development and evolution, control mechanisms and diversity pattern in time and space. Now let's discuss the first one which is flow of energy in the ecosystem. Continuous interaction goes on within an ecosystem. The interaction between components and subcomponents involves the flow of energy and cycling of mineral nutrients. In this process, transfer of energy takes place from one level to another. This is known as trophic level. Therefore, trophic level is the level or the stage at which food energy passes from one group to another. In the biosphere, there are broadly two groups of living organisms, autotrophs and heterotrophs. On the basis of food habit, these heterotrophs are further subdivided into three categories. They are herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Herbivores are plant-eating animals, carnivores are flesh-eating animals and omnivores are both plant and animal eater organisms. Now the second aspect of an ecosystem is the food chain or food web. Food chain can be defined as a sequence of transfer of energy from organisms in one trophic level to those in another trophic level. Sun is the major source of energy as we know and it helps in the growth of plants on the soil and water bodies. Plants form the basis of food for a large number of herbivores. These herbivores are used as food substances for carnivores. Besides, there are omnivores who feed on plant as well as animal flesh. This is a representation of a food chain and a food web. 
The solar energy absorbed by the soil is reflected in the form of plants and animals. These organisms have a limited cycle and die after some time. Once these organisms die, another group of organisms start their functioning as they feed on dead material. They help in decomposing the dead bodies of plants and animals on releasing the energy which is again absorbed by the soil to enrich its production of plants. Thus cycle is complete. Food chains are not always simple and isolated sequences. Several interconnected and overlapping food chains present a complicated pattern. Such patterns are called food web. Now what is a trophic level? We know solar energy is the source for all the plants for preparation of their food. The energy which is stored by the plants is known as trophic level 1. It becomes the source of energy for the herbivores. Therefore, transfer of energy from trophic level 1 to trophic level 2 takes place when the plant eating animals consume these plants. Again, this chemical energy through food consumed by the herbivores gets stored at trophic level 2 and becomes source of energy for the carnivores at the trophic level 3. Carnivores are flesh eating animals and depend upon other animals for food. These animals require a lot of energy for building their tissues. They receive their energy from trophic level 2 through food consumption. A part of the chemical energy from this level 3 of the food chain is transferred to omnivores at trophic level 4. So in a food chain, the members at the successive higher levels become smaller in number. Now what is a food pyramid then? When the numbers at successive trophic levels are plotted, they assume the shape of a pyramid. Hence it is called food pyramid or pyramid of numbers. You can have a look at this picture showing the food pyramid. Now let's do a quick recap. Ecology is the study of interactions between the organisms and their physical environment on the one hand and among organisms on the other. An ecosystem can be defined as a system of regularly interacting and interdependent components forming a unified whole. Food chain is an example in which transfer of energy take place in a sequential manner from one trophic level to another. In a food chain, the members at the successive higher levels become smaller in number. When the numbers at successive levels are plotted, they assume the shape of a pyramid. Hence, it is called food pyramid. Now, let's have a look at the balance of ecosystem. The number of organisms at any trophic level depends upon the availability of food at a lower level. With an increase in availability of food at the lower level, there is a consequent increase in the number and variety of organisms at its higher trophic level. This availability of food is the main factor which maintains the gr grand balance of nature. This balance is dynamic and fluctuates within certain limits. So every ecosystem has its own system of mechanism to control the balance. Now what is a biogeochemical cycle? The balance of ecosystem happens because in an ecosystem there are certain inherent processes in which nutrients or materials are transferred. Sometimes in a single direction and sometimes in cycles. Biogeochemical cycles, the biological, geological and chemical interactions are nothing but the movement and circulation of soluble inorganic substances which are your nutrients derived from soil and atmospheric phases of inorganic substances through organic phase of various biotic components. Similarly, a return circulation and movement of organic substances take place in favor of inorganic objects such as soil and atmosphere. Thus, these two systems are supplementary to each other and complete the cycle. The study of biogeochemical cycles can be approached on two scales. For example, cycling of all elements together or cycling of individual elements, for example, hydrological cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, oxygen cycle, sulfur cycle, so on and so forth. Besides, these cycles, sediment cycles and mineral cycles are also included in the broader biogeochemical cycles. These natural or biogeochemical cycles functions in a balanced manner which stabilizes biosphere and sustains the life processes on the earth. If we disturb them, it will lead to various negative consequences which ultimately affects the biosphere. Now what is a hydrological cycle? This cycle helps in exchange of water between air, land, sea, living plants and animals. 
solar energy is used to drive the hydrological cycle. Massive evaporation of water from the oceans, cloud formation and rainfall gives us supply and reserves of fresh water. At sub-zero temperature, rainwater freezes into snow and in presence of strong wind forms hail. Water as a rain, snow and hail is precipitated on the land and water surface. This is a simple representation of hydrological cycle. On the land surface, water seeps into the soil and is stored as groundwater. The natural water level or water table exists below the ground. The water table is supported by the underlying clay and rock strata. Groundwater does not remain static but moves in various direction. It moves up through capillary action and reaches soil surface where it is drawn by plant roots. Now what is a nitrogen cycle? Nitrogen and its compounds are essential for life processes in the biosphere. There is continuous exchange of nitrogen within the ecosystem operating the nitrogen cycle. Proteins produced by plants and animals in their metabolic processes are organic compounds of nitrogen. This is a simple representation of nitrogen cycle. The major load of nitrogenous organic residue in soil originates from the death and decay of plants and excreta of animals. These organic residues in soil are taken up by various soil microorganisms who break down soil nitrate into nitrogen by dentrification process, while others transform nitrogen into soluble nitrogen compounds. Now let's have a look at another cycle which is the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is a very important chemical cycle. The atmosphere is the minor reservoir of carbon. Hydrosphere is the major reservoir which contains approximately 50 times more as that of atmosphere. It is stored as bicarbonate mineral deposits on the ocean floor. The latter regulates the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere. The cycle operates in the form of carbon dioxide exchanging among the atmosphere, biosphere and the ocean. Again, this is a simple representation of carbon cycle. Now let's have a discussion about types of ecosystem. Ecosystem can be classified into various types on various bases. The most widely used and simple classification is on the basis of habitats. The idea behind this classification is that each habitat exhibits a particular physical environmental condition. These conditions determine the nature and characteristics of biotic communities. Now what is a terrestrial ecosystem? On the basis of spatial variation, the ecosystem can be broadly divided as terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem. The terrestrial ecosystem, as the name suggests, covers the entire 29% of the land area found on the Earth's surface. The terrestrial ecosystems are the major source, source of water and raw material for human beings. Now this is the picture of terrestrial ecosystem. The plant and animal communities of terrestrial ecosystem are more diversified than aquatic ecosystem. Land organisms have a greater range of tolerance than the aquatic ecosystem. As far as productivity is concerned, terrestrial ecosystems are more productive than aquatic ecosystem. Now let's have a look at terrestrial ecosystem subtypes. The terrestrial ecosystems are further subdivided into various subtypes. Major subtypes are upland or mountain ecosystem. The top picture shows that. Then there is lowland ecosystem and desert ecosystem shown by the pictures. These ecosystems or sub-ecosystems may be further subdivided depending on specific purpose and objectives. Maximum life forms are found in lowlands and they keep on decreasing with increase in height as the level of oxygen and atmospheric pressure decreases. Now let's learn about the aquatic ecosystem. This ecosystem refers to the 71% of the water present on the earth's surface in various forms. Like terrestrial ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem can be further divided into various subtypes. The major subdivision of this ecosystem may be freshwater, estuarine and marine. Again, these ecosystem can be further subdivided into smaller ones. Let's have a look at the subtypes. The variation within the various types of aquatic ecosystem are mainly related to abiotic factors. But there are also variations in terms of biotic communities that are living within these ecosystems. 
The limiting factors in aquatic ecosystems are the depth up to which sunlight can penetrate, the availability of nutrients and the concentrations of dissolved oxygen. This is a pictorial representation of an aquatic ecosystem. In marine ecosystem, shallow continental shelves are more productive than open ocean. The open oceans are most extensive in areas. They are the least productive of all ecosystem like the desert and terrestrial ecosystem. Another aspect which is uh, the determinants of the diversity of life in aquatic ecosystem is the adaptability of organisms. Some of the organisms exclusively live in water, namely fishes, whereas some of the organisms are amphibious in nature. They live both on land as well as on water. Some of the important amphibians are frogs, crocodiles, hippopotamus and variety of aquatic birds. Again, within water, some organisms live only in either freshwater or saline water and some organisms live in both freshwater and saline water. Hilsa fish is an example of the later type. Echinoderms and coelenterates live only in saline water. There are various types of fishes like rohu, katla, etc. found only in fresh water. Now, let's do a quick recap of this session. Probably our Earth is the only planet where life is found. All life forms exist in the biosphere. In an ecosystem, continuous interaction goes on between components and subcomponents, which involves the flow of energy. Each ecosystem has certain inbuilt mechanism to maintain balance. Natural biogeochemical cycle is one way. Ecosystem can be classified into various types. The most widely used and simple classification is on the basis of habitats, terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem. Thank you learners for listening patiently. Hope the session was fruitful. Good luck to you all.